Hello guys, my name is Sankar Shekhar and you are watching Tech Mahir. So in this video, I am going to talk about Wipro National Level Talent Hunt interview questions that are asked for 2020 students. If you are watching our channel for the first time, please do subscribe to our channel and click bell icon for instant notifications. Now let's dive into the video. What is the difference between final, finally and finalize? So the first difference is a final is a keyword, finally is a block and finalize is a method. And the second difference is a final keyword can be used in three areas. It can be used for variables, it can be used for methods and it can be used for classes. If you use final keyword for variables, then that value cannot be modified. If you use final keyword for methods, that method cannot be overrided. If you use a final keyword for a class, then we cannot inherit. So the main properties, two properties of whoops, one inheritance, second one is polymorphism, cannot be done if you use final keyword. Coming to finally, it is a block and mainly it is used for uh, cleanup actions and this finally keyword comes in exception handling so uh, we generally open files and we generally connect to the databases and we might forget them to close so if you want to uh, if you want to uh, close all the connections then we use a finally block and coming to finalize uh, we are writing classes and we are creating an instance for that classes. So there are many number of objects in heap memory. So if you want to uh, do garbage collection, then automatically the garbage collector will call finalize method. And that finalize method, what it will do is it will deallocate the memory for that objects. What is meant by multithreading? See, uh, executing multiple threads simultaneously is known as a multi-threading. So basically, you might, you might have an, a question that what is thread? A thread is a small part of the program. Uh, see, if, if there is a large program, splitting the entire program into small, small threads, such a way that we should execute the entire program in minimum time. So there is a company called JP Morgan. So what they used to do is they used to conduct offline uh, drives for freshers as well as then experienced candidates. The, the candidate whoever are appeared for that JP Morgan's uh, round, coding round, they used to conduct a coding question. They used to give a coding question and they used to test that code against nearly 20,000 test cases. So along back, uh, this 20,000 test case execution takes a lot of time nearly uh, two days of time uh, in that company one of the employee who joined has suggested an idea why can't we make this uh, 22 days of time for the execution of program to two hours or one hour so at that point of time they thought an idea to come up with a multi-threading so multi-threading is such a wonderful concept to execute the task simultaneously not only that, if you are using laptop, you are working in, you are working on Google and you open notepad and do, type something, you listen to music. So OS is also an, OS is also performing multi-threading concept. And in addition to this, if you write a simple Java program, that is a hello world program, for each and every program, JVM will create a thread called as main thread. So Multi-threading is everywhere and uh, in addition to this main thread, you can add uh, customized threads in uh, customized threads. So Java provides uh, multi-threading and you can create threads uh, in Java in two ways. One is using thread class, extending thread class. Second one is using by implementing runnable interface. Now, what is the difference between malloc and calloc? 
Before I move into this malloc and calloc, let's know the difference between static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation. So in static memory allocation, the memory will be allocated at compile time. And in dynamic memory allocation, the memory will be allocated at runtime. So we do have some drawbacks with this static memory allocation. So we, we can come on to the dynamic memory allocation. The drawback of static memory allocation is memory will be wasted because we are allocating at compile time. So to implement this dynamic memory allocation, we have three functions. One is malloc, second one is calloc and third one is realloc. Now let us, let us know the difference between malloc and calloc. So this malloc is a function which is used to allocate block of memory. And it calloc is a function which can be used to allocate array of memory. So the, this is the first difference. The second difference is uh, the memory which is allocated by the malloc will be will will have garbage values however in calloc all the values are initialized with zeros now let us know the syntax syntax of malloc and calloc which are displayed on the screen the, the, the syntax for malloc is type star ptr is equal to malloc of size of uh, size whichever you want whereas in calloc we are sending two parameters first one is uh, the size whatever you want and uh, value see 4 comma uh, the size of uh, size whichever we required so there you, you can see an array see each and every block is of different size or you can put as same size so here we are allocating a block of memory uh, here we are allocating array of memory however in malloc we are allocating a block of memory. Here we are allocating array of memory. That is the difference between malloc and calloc. Now the question is about uh, differentiate between queues and stacks. See first difference is a queue follows first in first out principle whereas stacks follows last in first out principle. And Q has uh, some of the operations like NQ, DQ, whereas stacks has uh, insertion and deletion operations like push and pop. Now let us talk about these operations using a screencast. Hey guys, now let us see the operations of queues and stacks. So queues, majorly we had three operations. One is insertion. The insertion is called as push. Uh, a deletion which is called as a pop and finding the topmost element which is known as peak. See there is a stack with three elements called 10, 4 and 64. Now I want to add an element. See I am going to push an element with, uh, with the element is 53. So I am going to click on go. So see the element whatever I am adding is being added at the top. Okay now, see now I, I'm, I'm adding one more element called 56. See the element whatever I'm adding, it is added on the top or head. See now I'm going to pop, I'm going to delete an element. If I want to delete an element, that element is also deleted from the top itself. See 56 will be deleted. Now uh, once again, I'm going to perform an operation called pop. See again 53 will be deleted. So now I want to know the peak element so peak element in the sense topmost element see topmost element is 10 so these are the three operations of stack now let us know the operations of queues so the insertion operation of queue is called as an nq the, the the deletion operation of queue is called a dq and as usual to find the topmost element we use peak see now i want to uh, i want to nq 57 See, the element whatever we are adding, that will be added at the tile. That will be added at the rear end. See, see the 57 will be added at the tail. See, now I, I want to add one more element called 70. See, I'm going to click on go. See, this will be added at the rear end. So this is just like um, uh, if you go for a bank, the people whoever are coming will be added at the end. See, now I'm going to delete. That means I'm going to perform DQ operation. See, if I perform DQ operation, the front person will be deleted. That means uh, the head will be deleted. See, now I, once again, I'm performing DQ operation. 52 will be uh, deleted and the topmost element now is 32. 
So to find the topmost element, we do have an operation called peak. So peak element is 32. So uh, these are the operations of queues and stacks. Now, what is the difference between an array and a linked list? So an array is a ordered collection of elements. So if you take a uh, first element, the first, if the first element is stored in 100 location, automatically the second location is stored in 102. Depends on the size. So all the elements are stored sequentially. Whereas in linked list, the elements are not stored in sequential manner. They are stored random. They are stored at random. Okay. Now. So the accessing of elements is easy in arrays compared to linked list. So if you want to access a 10th element in an array, you can directly access using an array name and that index. Yeah, if I want to access A is an array name, if I, if I want to access the 10th element, I can access using A of 10. Whereas if you want to access an element in the linked list, you need to traverse the entire list. You need to traverse the entire linked list. So traversing is a, some costly operation. Coming to insertion operation and deletion operation in arrays, it is a bit uh, costly compared to linked list. So you can see on the screen, if I want to insert an element, uh, an element 5 at index 3, I want to do shift operations. Whereas if you want to insert an element in an linked list, it is a bit easy. So you can see now on the screencast about the operations of linked list. Now let us uh, do some operations on linked list. So there are so many operations like insert, delete and search. See now what I am going to do is I am going to insert uh, an element. See the, this uh, insertion has we can do insertion in three, uh, three areas. I can insert at head position, I can insert at tail position, I can insert anywhere in this uh, uh, middle. So first what I am going to do is I am going to add 85. So at head position. See if I add 85 then 85 will be added at the head position. Now what I am going to do is I am going to insert. I am going to insert at the end. So I am going to insert 80 at the end. See if I click on go. The 80 will be inserted at the end. Now I am going to insert at any position. See I am going to insert in that second position. I want to insert 90. So if I click on go then automatically a uh, first traversing will happen and at second position it will check uh, uh, if it is second position the element will be inserted these are the insertion operations of linked list now i want to remove see i i can remove head see remove i, I have removed head right now so similarly i can remove tile see I, I, so first to remove trail, what it, we are going to do is we are going to save previous element. See, we are traversing till uh, end and we are storing that uh, previous element and I am going to delete that tail. Now I am going to delete an element at the middle. So how I can do how I can do that is see. I am going to delete at, at index two. So. See, I can do that. Second position element, uh, second position element got deleted here. So these are operations. One insertion operation, deletion operation. Insertion at head, insertion at tile, and insertion at any position. Similarly for deletion. Now I want to search, search, uh, search for five, search for two. Now I want to search for two. See, see, we are going to traverse whether checking whether uh, there is uh, two or not if it is two yes i am going to return two if there is uh, if i am finding 67 which is not there then automatically i am saying that element not found yes 67 is there that is the reason why i am getting that so i want to find for uh, two mm, i want to find for five so let me go and check for that whether five is there or not Yes, 5 is not there. So it is returning that uh, element is not found. So these are the operations of uh, linked list. 
The last difference of an array is array takes less memory, but however memory will be wasted. Memory utilization uh, arrays are bit lag compared to linked list. So linked list takes more memory compared to arrays, but memory utilization is high compared to arrays. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for watching and the remaining questions will be discussed in the next part 2 video. If you are watching our channel for the first time and yet to subscribe to our channel, please do subscribe to our channel.